faithfully and to the best. The federal cabinet has reached gender parity and three women hold key and powerful positions at the Treasury Board, Defense and at Finance. Significant yes, however, the comments is nowhere near gender equity. 103 female members representing 30 percent of the 338 elected MPs. Just celebrating the, the, you know, the first woman of all the groundbreaking women who have been elected over the past hundred years. Advocates for increasing women in politics say Canada ranks about 60th globally. We have a long way to go, and I think this should be something that everybody is really, really concerned about, is why are we lacking so far behind in terms of uh, gender representation, in, especially in, I'm talking especially in our national parliament, but provincially we have, you know, we see the same thing. It's amazing. Um, I just got sworn in. I'm Richie Valdez. Celebration for Rachi Valdas marking the first Canadian Filipino woman to win a seat in Parliament. Valdas says she was the beneficiary of a strong support network. We definitely still have a lot of opportunities to increase the number of women in Parliament. Um, a lot of the barriers that we face, like personally for me, um, if it were not for the support that I received from my husband, advocating for me to go ahead and pursue my dreams, um, that certainly made a difference for me and it made it easier. While data shows support, donations and family are all keys to electing more women, there's also the issue of running women candidates in winnable ridings. Yaksem Won finished third for the NDP in a very competitive Northern Ontario riding of Thunder Bay Rainy River. Being a woman and a visible minority with, let's say, a, a Chinese name, those are things that uh, I think when, when people go to vote or, or to look for those leaders, that's an extra hurdle that, that sometimes they have trouble getting over or identifying with. Carleton University is working on a project tracking diversity in Canadian elections. Bossy says more recruiting is needed along with some measure of responsibility on political parties and the grassroots to facilitate change. This data basically allows us to uh, understand how we might hold them accountable and say, well, OK, yeah, that's great. You're, you're nominating a lot more women candidates, but you're doing it primarily in districts that are really not competitive. And so is that significant? Other academics say harassment and threats pose as significant barriers for women thinking about serving in public office. You know, we know that there's hostility, this climate, which is extremely difficult uh, for women in positions of public authority, that this is probably dissuading lots of women from going into public life. Tomorrow, we'll hear from a trailblazer in Canadian politics. For City News, I'm Nandika Ravi from Omni News.